I take a lot of photos because I struggle with memory like most of us. These are photos from North Wales from when we were in our early 20s. This is what we were doing a couple of weeks ago. That looks like a very young Kim climbing uh, the north ridge of Trevan because we can see the road in the bottom there. And this looks like, well, that's Bristley Ridge up there. So we've been doing this quite a long time and it was nice to go back and do it again. And climbing has taught me a lot about, about life and has definitely affected how I teach students. I've been asked to give a couple more talks, so I thought I'd try out some material with you. When people ask me to talk, they don't ask me to talk about teaching directly, more all the other stuff, the stuff that happens in between, or of course YouTube. We talk about success all the time, right? We're always talking about what success is, what success looks like, how to be successful. Um, but in my job, I find it very important to talk about failure. Uh, do you agree that it's fair for me to say that everybody makes mistakes? Um, I think that's true, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's human nature. I don't think there's there isn't anybody that's never made any mistakes. And you have to have a little bit of freedom to make mistakes, right? If we go back to climbing, um, we worry about falling, we worry about failing when we're climbing, but if we weren't allowed to nice. fail, if we weren't allowed to fall, what's the rope for? The rope is there to let us do that and we've got trad climbing, where you've seen placing gear in the rock, which might be a little bit uh, less predictable, but then we have sport climbing where we clip bolts as we go and it, it's making what we do as safe as possible so that you can fail, you can push your athletic abilities so that you can fail and fall and... Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, that's it, nice. Yeah, there we go. Go on. Go on. Keep going. I seriously haven't got the Keep bringing your feet up. That's right, I got I you. Can't. Oh. Oh. Honestly, I've got no umph. That arm just... Oh. And by doing that, you get stronger you learn how to move. And on some routes, they are just so complex that you have to work out where the holds are to be able to progress. It's the same in learning, and it's probably particularly important to medicine and healthcare professions. When a student comes to university, um, these are young people. They have probably been mostly successful at school with their exams, because that's what you have to do to get here. They might have had some mishaps, they might not quite have got the grades that they wanted, but on the whole, people go from school and they get to university and they haven't really failed yet. And when you get to university, the stakes are higher. It's costing you money, it's costing you time and effort. You've now got to become an adult and look after yourself, you're investing in yourself. Um, and university is often the first time you experience significant failure. And it's important that you learn how to deal with that. And particularly in medicine, it's important that you learn how to deal with that honestly and effectively. <laughs> this hasn't just sprung into my mind because I'm marking the first year exam papers, honestly. Uh, <laughs> although it might have reminded me of the topic. But um, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna push yourself hard, if you're gonna live on the edge, then you've got to learn that failure is okay. But it doesn't feel okay. Failure feels horrible. 
uh, I think we all hate it. It just, oh, you hate to fail at things. And if, if you internalize that feeling, if you really remember how you hate to fail at things, it makes it harder to try things because you don't want to try things because you might fail and you might get that feeling. So when you fail at something, you need to uh, measure what's happened. Okay, so why did I fail this exam? Honestly, really, really honestly. Is it because I didn't work hard enough? There's a clear solution there. Is it because I didn't understand the topic? Is it because I thought I understood the topic, but when examined on the topic, it turns out that I didn't? And it's how you honestly grapple with that and then work out how to solve it that's how you become better, that's how you progress, that's how you become excellent. Excellence and experience go hand in hand with failure. Um, everybody fails, it's just, it's just part of what we do, right? But learning to deal with it uh, is difficult. And like I say, university is often the first place it comes up. So, this has become part of my job. I have found that by teaching students how to overcome that failure, how to succeed next time, it largely takes their mind, it, take, it takes away those feelings of failure and it, it instead replaces those with feelings of, I can do this, hope, belief, right? We've worked out what went wrong, it was a blip, we've worked out how to fix it, bam, we're going to fix it. The next exam, you're going to pass. And there's, there's always a reset exam, right? There's always a, a way of getting over that. I mean, there is still going to be stress and fear, which themselves can be good drivers to getting you organized and doing the work that you need to do to succeed. That's what stress and fear are there for, right? That's what that, yeah, and you can learn to manage that in other ways. That, that's kind of a, a different topic. But grappling with this is important. And, okay, so if you're at university, if you're failing or struggling with a subject, if you go and see the teacher, um, the teacher is often the quickest way to either explain the topic to you or change how you're studying. And a lot of what I do is actually changing how people study, recognizing what their limitations are uh, specifically and saying, okay, well, this will suit you or this will suit you and are you doing some of this? And as a teacher, it's... It's not really the students that are flying that are most interesting to me. The students that are really good, they're probably going to succeed without me. Now, the students that are struggling, this is where I feel useful. This is where teachers get most of their satisfaction from. So don't feel like if you're not doing well, you shouldn't speak to the teacher. That's when you really should speak to the teacher and the teacher will get a lot out of that experience of helping you, right? Because that's what teachers want, right? Job satisfaction. Now I teach anatomy, uh, which means I teach a lot of medical students and other healthcare professional students. And you have to recognize that you are gonna make mistakes. Otherwise you will be paralyzed um, and you won't go forward. Now, making mistakes in healthcare, uh, well, it can be really bad, right? It can be detrimental to the patient that the mistake has occurred with. But it is so important to be honest and open with the patient, with the colleagues, with yourself. But other people will teach you this. You don't need an anatomy lecturer to teach you this. But it's the same concept of making a mistake, being open and honest about it so you learn about it and others around you learn about it and everybody improves. Um, but that said, it's, um, it feels horrible, you know. It's easy, easy to say, difficult to do. Um, but remember, you're not alone. <laughs> You're not the first person that's made a mistake or failed. Everybody does it. You will do it again, which also feels horrible. But honestly, if you're not living on the edge, how do you know you're alive, right? So this is, this is kind of like that hidden curriculum that sometimes gets mentioned. We don't... Nobody really talks about this or... I don't know, there are probably training courses for this, I don't know. But um, there's obviously teaching and assessment but there's so much in between. Anatomy is also a little bit special. There's a lot of hidden curriculum in there, a lot of things we know we're doing that will benefit students. Uh, and there's the same sort of thing in education generally. Lots of things that we know which we're not overt about, which we know help students. And um, everybody talks about success. People don't talk about failure enough. 
and <laughs> embrace failure. Oh, that's a terrible phrase, isn't it? But you do, you do have to recognize you're going to make mistakes, you're going to fail. Um, it's how you honestly grapple with that and deal with it that makes, makes all of the difference. And you might have heard me talk about, um, well, I used to say, uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, which is the old saying, you know. So if you don't prepare enough, you're going to fail. But I take that in a different way on that way now. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. I also prepare to fail, right? If I'm climbing, if I'm doing, if I'm in the mountains, if I'm doing anything dangerous, or even when I'm at work and I'm preparing exams, because uh, exams are pretty important for us teachers as well as the students, we prepare to fail. We think about what could go wrong, how are we going to manage that? We try and think of everything. We never think of everything. Uh, and we work out what, how we're going to grapple those things that go wrong before we do it. And you can do that as a student as well. You know, you know what exams are coming up this year. You know what you've got to achieve. And you can plan to succeed, you know, and you will prepare. But what happens if you fail? How are you going to manage that? So you can prepare to fail in a good way, if that makes sense. Um, I have found that that's an important life skill. Um, you have alternate routes off the mountain. Uh, you have uh, things that you can do if your triathlon transition doesn't go to plan. All these sorts of things. If this doesn't work, I'll do this. If this doesn't work, I'll do that. I'm not talking about changing your plan or not getting to the end, not succeeding in your degree. I'm just talking about if that doesn't go to plan, how will I deal with it? Uh, prepare to fail. All right. Enough rambling for me, but... Um, if you're feeling those feelings, don't feel so bad about it. We can do this, all right? You'll be fine. We can do it. All right, see you next week.